Welcome back, everybody, to our fourth and final week of our Advent series. And Dennis and I have been reading through this little book by Rebecca McLaughlin, Is Christmas Unbelievable? And so as we prepare our hearts for Christmas morning coming very soon in anticipation of celebrating Jesus, the baby, um, but not just the baby, but his life. And that takes us all the way through to his resurrection. Um, the story, the love story of God, of, of why we have the Bible, why we, um, why we believe what we believe. And so this final chapter, Dennis, you've focused on, and the title is, Why Does It Matter? Why do we need to know these things about the Christmas story? Well, again, good to see you, Tracy. And uh, so here we are, we're really cro- close to Christmas. And so if I don't get to talk to you again or see you again, Merry Christmas to you, your family. Yeah, it's you a, too. A time that's very enriching and, and filled with great worship and joy. I know it will be. Yeah, chapter four, why does it all matter? I, I think probably she did her very best in chapter four because she's made her case in chapter one that Jesus is real. Chapter two, it's very, very clear that she's done her homework and made the case that the Gospels are historically reliable documents, more so than other any other literature in ancient classical works. Documentation is off the charts, immeasurably better than anybody else. And so, uh, and then in chapter three, you know, are, are, are we really to believe in miracles like a virgin birth, angels descending, uh, these sorts of things? Essentially, she was asking the question in chapter three, right? Uh, as 21st century enlightened, scientifically aware type folk, uh, can we believe in the Christmas story? I mean, you know, and again, I think you made the case. You summed it up perfectly. Choose your miracle. And so then she just finalizes the book in chapter four and perfect title. Why does it all matter? So what's the significance? What's the meaning? Why does it all matter? Well, If Jesus is really who he said he was, if he was crucified on a cross, not just like thousands of others that were crucified on a Roman cross, but Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that he was crucified on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins. If he was buried, and he was, if he was on the third day raised from the dead in an immortal body, that that is earth shattering news. If all that's real, it changes everything. So the the Christmas story is a story that's situated in a larger story, right? The whole story of Mm. creation, the fall of humanity because of our rebellion, the redemption that is offered to us in the person of Christ, and then the second coming of Christ where all who have fallen in love with him, who have repented of their sins and put their trust in him, We'll get to live with him forever in a new heavens and a new earth. Well, that matters. Now, either we are gullible, credulous nitwits who are believing a fictional story, or if it's true, and we believe with all our hearts it's true, because it is true, then that changes everything. And so chapter four, essentially, she builds her argument around two things. If the Christmas story is false, then all of Old Testament, New Testament is just all false. It's all just make-believe. It's it's stuff the apostles wished to be true. They had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah. But of course, you know, according to that reading, they're saying he's not. So if the Christmas story is false, it's all false. And if that's the case, then Rebecca makes this argument. Then there are no values, the values that we've cherished. And then there is no meaning to life. Uh, Not that this will mean anything to anybody, but I spent my undergraduate years as a philosophy major. And I have spent a great deal of time reading in this area about the meaning of life. And she's exactly right. Her argument boils down to this. And again, Tracy and I both recommend this book to all of you. Please go read it. It's a great Advent read for Christmas. It'll strengthen your faith mightily. She essentially says this, these values like um, objective values, like men and women have equal value. She's saying that's not self-evident. That's actually a value, a moral value that comes from scripture. 
She goes on to make the case mm-hmm. that the Greeks and Romans would have mocked that. And so what's happened in our culture is we take some of these things as self-evident. They're not self-evident. Uh, everybody would agree that rape is wrong. But that's not a self-evident value that you get from natural law. It actually is a scriptural value. So our first argument is, mm-hmm. if the whole Christian story is wrong, and she cites unbelievers on this. She, she cites an atheist who's making this very case. He's saying, I don't believe a word of it, but the West, and in particular, America, have built their entire their entire civilization on Christian values. So we must recover them. And then her second argument is this. If the Christian story, the Christmas story is not true, then there is no meaning to life and there's no meaning and significance to mine and your individual life. And she makes a great case by simply saying these identities that we think we have, if the Christmas story is not true, it's false, then really all we are are uh, cosmic accidents, uh, brains in a vat, and chemical processes that we have no real unique identity whatsoever. And so, you know, to to sum it all up, I would say this. I think chapter four is the best of the four chapters. She really ties it all together. And essentially she says this, it's gonna boil down to either Nietzsche was right, God is dead, and if he's right there, if God is dead, then there are no objective moral values. It's all just make-believe or Jesus is raised from the dead and it's all very real and our lives do have meaning and we do have objective values. I personally think the Christmas story is entirely true. Yeah, and the greatest story ever told. Amen. Um, and for us, are we willing to receive the gift of the Christmas story? So uh, we are so thankful that you've been with us during our Advent series. Thank you, Dennis, for all your insights. And we hope that you will um, find this book and read it. And um, we'll put the the information on the website. And from our Lynx family to you, to your homes, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And um, may you enjoy love and peace in in the days ahead. I echo every bit. Thanks, Dennis. God bless. Joy to the world. See ya. The Lord has come. Let earth receive.